Because you cannot go past Michael Walters. No, it doesn't matter that he's already been a hero a couple of times this season. If he keeps producing performances like this, Incredible. this is his rightful place now in the game. He's long been regarded this season as an All-Australian, but he really has ratcheted things up. And when you produce a 25 disposal game and kick six goals, one, and you're the, the heartbeat of... A ter the third quarter is actually as good a quarter as I've seen for the year. Yep. And then Fremantle flexed in the last quarter and did what they needed to do at good home. Game. And it changed the framing of the question as Kingy and I were chatting this morning. You know, I'm not sure that Nathan, that he's taking votes off Nathan Fife yeah. anymore in the Brownlow. I think Nathan <laughs> Fife is taking votes off him. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. He's just another player that you sit down and you watch and you think, God, I wish he was at my football club. And the beauty of Michael Walters' story and, and summed up, he, he, he didn't go over the top, uh, Ross Lyon, as we know, <laughs> in his press conference. Handy. Yeah, he was handy. handy. Yeah, very handy. But what was more important was um, Ross saying that this guy should speak every week. The story of Michael Walters and what he's overcome to get to this level in football is just a fantastic story. They're exciting, the Dockers. Remember I told you a couple of weeks ago, I've tipped them, I've tipped them, they keep losing on yeah. me. I thought they were a good team and they kept on losing. I thought I'll give him one more go. And guess what I did in the weekend? I didn't bloody tip. Oh, you did. You're I didn't joking. Tip. I won't do that again. I'm not at home. They have become the good team that you forecast. Yes. So now we see.